Software Academy, and welcome to lesson 5.1, um, our first lesson in lesson in chapter 5 here. Um, and it's how do you simplify square roots and solve by taking square roots. Some of this is a little bit of a review, um, but we are going to start by simplifying simple square roots. So I know you could just type this number into your calculator um, and get some funky decimal, um, but we are looking at more so simplifying um, as an irrational number. So these are simplifying irrational um, numbers. Um, the whole idea of this is, um, so we have a square root and there's a little two on the square root there and what that tells me is I want to look for perfect squares factors that go into 8. Okay, um, so factors of 8 that happen to be perfect squares, and if you don't know your perfect squares, um, your perfect squares are things like 4, 16, um, 25, 36, um, 49, 64, um, so forth, and that's because 4 is 2 squared, 16 is 4 squared, 25 is 5 squared, and so on. Okay, so we're looking for these types of factors. Okay, well, what's the biggest one that goes into 8? Whoops, the biggest one that goes into 8 is 4. So the way that I like to show this is we can think of this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Okay, 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, um, then what happens is, well, the square root of 4 that's our perfect square. If you just type in the square root of 4 into your calculator, second um, x squared, sorry, second this, 4, you get 2, okay? So this is just 2, and then square roots of 2, and that's how you would write your simplified answer. Um, if you ever want to check your work, um, if you try the square root of 8, and you try 2 square roots of 2, you'll get the same answer. Um, but we do like this version more. It's just prettier for our math eyes here. Okay, um, so let's look at another one, um, number two. So 48, again, we're looking for those perfect square factors into 48. Here's a trick. Um, if you go under y equals in your calculator, um, type 48 divided by x, and you go to the table, um, it'll list a whole bunch of factors and what you're concerned with is the biggest square root factor. So I see 16 and 3. So 48 is the same as the square root of 16 and the square root of 3. Um, 16 just becomes 4, so we have 4 roots of 3 um, and that's your simplified answer. Okay? Um, when we throw variables into the mix, you're asking yourself how many pairs of V can I take out of, let's think of it like a drawer. How many pairs can I take out of this sock drawer here? Um, the 48, we're going to treat the same as we did in example 2. So the 48 part, um, we know, is just going to be um, square root of 16 and square root of 3 which is four roots of three. The v part we can look at separately. If we're taking the square root of v squared, I could take out one pair, which means it's just a v without a square root. Now how we'll finalize our answer is anything outside the square root goes first, and anything after or inside a square root stays inside, goes later, okay? So how many pairs with variables? Um, for 4, so 192, um, how many pairs of M? I know one pair can come out. I also know two pairs of N can come out. So I already took care of the M and the N. Um, and that's going to be outside of our square root. 192, okay, let's use our trick here. Um, 192 divided by X, whoops, under Y equals. Okay, 
the table and we want the biggest one so we can get them all out at once so 64 is a perfect square and 3 so 64 and 3 64 just becomes um, 8 okay so we're gonna write that way out front squared is 64 is 8 um, m n squared roots of 3 that's all you need so very nice okay For this particular problem, uh, there's a negative 4 out front, and really all you're going to do is multiply that at the end. Um, so you can treat everything else separately, um, like we just learned, um, thinking about square roots that go into 180. Um, if you don't know them again, graphing calculator, go to the table, and let's figure them out. So 180 divided by x, second table. Figure them out. 36 and 5 look like the winner there. Um, also, the x's, I have an x to the first and a y squared. Um, so since there's no power here, that just means the x is also going to stay inside the square root. The y, I could bring out a pair of y's. So y would actually come out front here. Um, 36 just becomes 6. Um, y and then root of 5x and then lastly um, that negative 4 that we have in front we are just going to multiply um, by that negative 4 so it's negative 24 y roots of 5x and that's really it so treat the square root stuff the same and then um, multiply anything out front um, for 6, so we'll think of this as a little negative 1 outside. Um, 80, square root of 80. Let's see what factors go into it. Do, do, do. And if you know them off the top of your head, that's fine. But I do want to emphasize this is a nice trick um, to know how to find factors really for anything, for any case. Um, 16 and 5. Okay, square root of 16. Square root of 5 is how that's broken up. Um, M's, well that M, it's going to stay inside. Um, so we have negative 1. Um, N, there's three of them. So I can bring out one pair. Okay, if we think of this as N times N times N, I can take out these two, and they're here. Okay. Um, I do have one left over, so if you have an odd, <clears throat> sorry, if you have an odd exponent, you're going to have something left over inside the square root. Now this 16 just becomes a 4, um, 5 stays inside, m stays inside, and we have a leftover sock, n. So we have negative 4, that's 4 times negative 1, n, 5, m, n, bada bing, bada boom. Okay. Um, some other things, multiplying radicals. So here's an interesting thing. If you have radicals and you're multiplying, okay, radical things can multiply right to other radical things. So this is going to be square root of 15 times 5, which is 75. Um, after you do that, then you want to look to break it up. So 75 is the same as 25 times 3, and 25 is 5. So 5 roots of 3 is what that one would simplify. So first, multiply. Second, break it down. And then just repeat from before. Okay. Um, similar idea here. So the root stuff will add or will multiply to one another. The other numbers will also multiply. So we have like a negative 1 and a negative 3. So negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Now let's look at the tens, so square root of 100, and well, here's the nice thing, square root of 100, that's just a regular 10 times 3, it means our answer is 30. Just a regular old 30. Okay, and we're almost finished up here. Um, and the next part is rationalizing radicals. So we don't like to have uh, square roots in the denominator, they, they scare us. Rats in the denominator, so to speak. Okay, um, so we want to get rid of it. And the way to get rid of it is through, it's called rationalizing the denominator. So we're going to make this bottom a rational number. 
we're going to do that by, see what I have highlighted in blue here? Um, this 5. We're going to multiply by exactly the same thing. Square root of 5 over square root of 5. We can do that mathematically because that's really just a funky way to say 1. Um, but we'll see what it looks like here. So, 4 times square root of 5 is just 4 roots of 5. Notice 4 is not a radical, so it can't multiply to the other radical. Down below, we have the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, or the square root of 25. And then magically, what happens is the square root of 25 just becomes 5. So, these are the same thing, it's just that this looks nicer, and there's no rat in that denominator. Okay. Um, last example of rationalizing um, for 10 here. So if we have this radical in the top, we're still just going to focus on the bottom. Um, so square root of 6. So square root of 6 over square root of 6. Now the radicals can multiply together. So it's square root of 12 all over square root of 6 times square root of 6, 36. And we have a little bit more to do with this one. Um, so square root of 12 and we know 36 is just 6, but we can still break down the square root of 12. The square root of 12 is, so just from before, um, square root of 4 times square root of 3. The square root of 4 is 2. And lastly, if the numbers are outside here, so like 2 and 6, those can reduce. So think of it as 2 6. Um, which, I mean, it, it's one-third, but just to show you, um, 2, 6, and if you make that a fraction, it's just one-third. So, we have the root of 3 all over 3, and that is what it simplifies as. 2, 6, just so if you're lost, that's one-third, okay? <clears throat> the last part of this, which is a little bit of review, but now we're going to throw in some square root stuff, is solve each equation using square roots. A little bit of review. Um, the first step is to isolate the x squared. Okay, so we'll do that by subtracting 6. So we have x squared equals 1. Okay, pretty easy. Um, next, square root both sides. So if we take the square root of x squared, now plus or minus equals plus or minus. That's a big thing. Um, square root of 1. And in our case, um, square root of 1 is 1, but it is important, so now x is equal to plus or minus 1. You need that plus or minus. Plus or minus. Okay? Um, so last example of that type, let's subtract the 5. Isolate the p. So now it's equal to 25. Um, square root both sides. Boop, 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 boop. Don't forget plus or minus square root of 25. And that means it's plus or minus 5. Okay. Sometimes you'll get an irrational number here. Okay. You could just leave it. So for example, let's give you another one. I know. Um, P squared um, plus, we'll say, 7 equals 30. That's a good one. Um, say we subtract 7. Okay, so we get p squared equals 23. Um, when you square root both sides, you get p is equal to plus or minus root of 23. Oops. And that's okay. That's an answer, um, but that's just how you'll look at it. So, a um, little bit longer notes, a little bit new stuff, so please make sure you're looking at the practice of these. Um, I'll have the answers to those up as well. And um, great job, guys. Thanks.